Motoring Middle East Review. Today I'm checking out the Nissan Patrol Gazelle X. It's a UAE only update to what is a very beloved car. The Patrol's been on sale in this region since 1998, but it's been largely unchanged. But the Middle East loves it. We've been buying tons and tons of them, and production just keeps going, even though there's an Y62, which we still call the new Patrol. So the Gazelle X is sort of an off road gift to fans of the Patrol. It comes in three editions a Falcon, a Gazelle, and a Gazelle X. Today we're just going to look at the Gazelle X. I'm trying to get the other ones as well. The regular Gazelle starts at 224 and comes with very fancy suspension, some other bits, which is shared with this top of the line car which retails for a fairly staggering 292,000 dirhams. Now it comes in manual and automatic as well, so it's good to see that Nissan is still supporting those of us who like to row our own gears. It's a little bit controversial response to it, so let's unpack this car and see what it's like and if it actually performs in the desert here, the harshest of critics. Opinions on this car have come in thick and fast since it was unveiled at a special launch event a few months ago. I drove with them briefly and I was quite impressed with what they've done to it. So take a closer look now. But it's important to note that this isn't really a new patrol. It's a lot of aftermarket parts, well-chosen parts, and they all come with a warranty. This is actually a huge deal because you don't get cars like this with a warranty. When you go to the aftermarket, Anything you change, suspension, whatever, intake, even the snorkel, you are basically throwing away your very, very important warranty. So this car is fully, hugely modified out of the box and you don't have to worry about taking it to the dealership afterwards. You don't have to be worried. Now, let's unpack the Gazelle X in more detail. I know that price scares a lot of people and the look of it. I'll just take a moment to think about the look of it. I am not crazy about it, but I think it's because they went over the top and a little bit look at me. I mean, people certainly look at you. If it is up to me, I take away the stripes down there and I take away the roof rack. And I think that would be enough for me. I think uh, that's, uh, that's went too far for me. But apart from that, it is a pretty aggressive thing. And it's all built for a purpose. It is function and form all in one. So what have we got? Well, really, it's a patrol on 35. That's not an easy thing to do. You've got to lift it quite a bit to clear these 35 inch tires. What are these tires? They're BFG K02 sitting on KMC rims. Now, KO2s are still quite new in the market for some. Others are very fond of it, myself included. This is actually the C-rated version, so it's the same as you get on the Ford Raptor. Now, 35s are massive. They would rub everywhere, which is why we have these aftermarket arches to clear the big tires. And inside, let's see if I can see a shot of this, King Shocks. I love King Shocks. I've had it on two of my off-road cars. I stand by them. These are adjustable, and of course, they're custom valved for this application. Lots of little shiny bits here. I don't know if you can see it but we'll move the camera down and you'll see what they've done to make it work. Monster track bar under here, that's the big shiny thing there. And a kind of king steering stabilizer, so that keeps your wheels, the big tires from bossing the wheels around. So yeah, big, big suspension upgrade. I can't really tell you how much of a big deal it is to have king shocks available at your dealership. These give an incredible ride. What else have they done to the thing? Well, they've got an off-road bumper with the little gazelle logo love this little detail design detail here cut into it got these meaty meaty shackles which are actually unfortunately taking out the paint here if you can see <laughs> there's a big hole here people ask me what the hole is for the hole actually makes the bumper stronger and there are huge plates underneath centering the bumper there's a full-size tire carrier here that actually has a proper 35 inch spare a lot of wind so I'm trying to get around this without too much trouble weirdly the shackle here is pointing in a different direction this is a proper tire carrier so it won't rattle even though this one rattles a little bit but it has been jumped a lot off-road this roof rack aluminium I think I'm not sure it also hides quite a nice little light bar here I think this is a 40 or 50 inch I'm not entirely sure there's one more set of lights at the front these are very, very strong, actually. I use these lights off-road in the dark. They're really, really good. This front bumper, again, a little bit of an underbite, like the car feels like it has a bit of an underbite. And it hides a winch, a very nice little come-up winch, which I have actually used. So, yeah, it's basically got everything you'd possibly want, except there are tons of upgrades that you can't actually see. Oh, and I forgot to mention the snorkel. Oh, the safari snorkel here. That actually works, apparently. There's a cyclonic air filter on the inside. So a lot of people ask me, why no turbos? Why no supercharger? Well, 
the dealer actually thought about that. Nissan Middle East thought about that. But the problem is, when you put a car with a turbo, the warranty guys get freaked out because they know that people are going to take those turbos off and put whopping great massive ones the size of my head on the car as soon as they leave the showroom. So it's really, really a bit of a risk for them. This car can take turbos. Everybody knows you can easily make another three, four hundred horsepower. But the problem is, can you trust people not to break it? And at the same time, this is a very, very old car with that much horsepower. You've got to think about upgrading the brakes. You've got to think about upgrading the exhaust. Tons of little things. So I can see why they didn't do it. Plus, you've got to certify it again for fuel economy and crash and all of those things. All reasons why they didn't do a turbo. So, but this is interesting. This car is basically how I would have done a patrol. I thought about doing one on 35s and this has all the stuff I want. It's got king shocks, front and rear steel bumpers, a uh, proper set of wheels. I'm not crazy about the roof rack, but the, apart from that, it's exactly how I would have done it, including a couple of things that you can't see. Shall I show you those things? Now, you can't actually see it, but these axles are a little different from the regular one. Patrol axles are incredibly strong. That's why you get them. But these axles have been re-geared, so they have different gearing in them to handle 35, so they don't run out of puff. If you put normal gears in, the car just wouldn't move, but it's been re-geared. That affects the top speed, as we'll see, but it does help the car move along. Plus, actually, the manual cars actually have fifth gears that are a little different, enabling the car to keep slightly lower fuel consumption at 100, 120. Performance is also helped by the addition of this full-length three-inch custom exhaust system, which is very loud. A little bit too loud if you ask me. The Gazelle boot actually has a couple of really interesting things. One of which is this gate here to stop your belongings from slamming into the rear passengers. And all of this is a front deck trail system. So basically it's a set of uh, drawers that slide out. If I grab this here, it's actually lockable. And you've got a whole bunch of off-road stuff here. Oh, and it's going back. Look at that, nice solid clunk. In here you've got a set of skid plates and a triangle. Actually, I should go through what the stuff is in here because here's the typical recovery gear. There's a big uh, rubber rope here. It's called, we call it a Viking rope. Some people call it a bubber rope, but basically it stretches and doesn't hit the car so hard when you pull it. You've also got the winch controller. Let's see if we can find that. Piece of trim fell off. And a user's manual for the winch. Oh, I'll pull this out if I can. A spade. Spades are important. You've also got ample tie downs here. For all of your stuff all of this stuff can be opened up all these panels and a flag flags are nice and over here i don't know if you can see this too well air compressor with a perfect pressure system so basically it'll inflate to whatever pressure you desire once you just press okay over here of course you need to have the right pipe which somebody has pinched from this car the swines so let's take a look at the gazelle interior and see what we've got it won't take very long believe me what have you got here a rear climate control switches on and a fan speed controller. Rear seat entertainment? Nope. Nope. Very, very basic pockets in which I keep a lot of stuff. I think Nissan should be a little bit ashamed. Can you imagine a car for 290,000 dirhams without a head unit with a screen, with no reversing camera, with no apps, with anything actually? I'm surprised there's no on the tape deck. It's a little disappointing and for the amount of money Nissan should do better. You've got also very basic climate control, which is a bit funny because the Super Safari comes with automatic climate control. It does come with the five-speed manual, which is a bit rubbery and notchy. It's a truck gearbox. You've got down to the bottom here, the uh, secondary transfer case control. So it's like two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive high and four-wheel drive low. You've got the set button for your tire pressure system. That's this one. And you've also got traction control, actually stability control. So basically, it's an incredibly bare cabin, and the idea is that you'll customize it. But we've already spent 290,000 dirhams. I want, I want a screen. How hard can it be to go to Pioneer and get me a screen? It's crazy. It's balmy. And considering how much you can't see out the back with that massive 35-inch tire, you need a screen. On the steering wheel, we've got, well, nothing really. You've got cruise control, which is having a bit of an issue on this car, but I think it's a prototype, so I'll excuse them for that. And these wonderful iconic dials which I do love. Let's be honest there isn't much talk about the patrol. Oh and I love these A pillars. You know why? Because they're so thin. Look at the visibility. It's incredible. Incredible visibility. Fine, fine. Enough talking. Let's get this beast in the road and see if it lives up to that billing. So this is my brief on-road drive of the patrol. I mean the off-road stuff is what you came here for. Let's be honest. So let's stick to that. Um, the Patrol is ever been one of my favorite cars, to be honest with you. I don't understand the Patrol. It's so basic. It's so ancient. Yes, it's very strong. Yes, people tend to do crazy things with it. But there are cars like the FJ and the Wrangler, which are so much better on off-road. 
in terms of just the, the way they flex and get around obstacles. And then you have on-road cars like the Land Cruiser, which are much nicer and more habitable. The Patrol has just been a bit of a thug's car. But that's maybe the appeal. So this is the first time I'm really spending a lot of time with it. i got to be honest with you, it's not that bad. There are unforgivable things. The fact that there's no Bluetooth in a car that costs nearly 300,000 dirhams. Unforgivable. No steering wheel controls apart from cruise control. And it's the most complicated cruise control in the world. There's no information. There's no fuel economy. There's not even an outside temperature gauge. All these things are stuff that Nissan can add cheaply. So they should be ashamed of themselves. Having said that, this is a car with a lot of charm. It's a bit like a horse. You've got to give it the beans and then you sort of get what it's coming from. And, and, you get a manual. You get a manual. You know, I just said nice things about Jeep. But the new Wrangler doesn't come with a manual. I had a manual Jeep. Sorry, I'm digressing, but I know it's the point. Nissan can do manuals at every single stage. Whether it's Super Safari, Safari, Gazelle, Gazelle X, Falcon, all of them are available with manuals. All of them. And Nissan, Jeep, Jeep, cannot be bothered. Could not be bothered, no matter how many times I asked, to bring a manual. Now, does that matter? Isn't the automatic better? Yes, I think even the patrol automatic is better. It's a five-speed, it's ancient, but it's so much easier to live with. But you just can't replace the fun of a manual and this is a fun manual it's very rubbery it's very long throws watch here huge throws but it makes me happy and this is a very very simple car um, you might notice steering wheel slightly crooked I think it hits something off road and they haven't fixed it yet so a couple of things there's also some rattles back there it's been jumped it's been jumped but more concerningly is a uh, on 35 inch tires, the turning circle is not bad, but it does roll a lot. Having said that, the on road ride is really good. Really good. As you'll feel off road, it's actually really good. But the on road ride is superb. Look at the road, look at the road, look at the road. The steering is so slow. Why is the steering so slow? You'd really think they could do better steering, but it's a very, very ancient system. I like driving it. I wouldn't want to drive it every day. And I'll tell you why. There's a whistle from the light bar, which I can live with. It only happens if you open this, you can hear it. But this exhaust, oh my god, this exhaust. It's so loud, it just gets on your nerves. At 100, 120, it's like 100 decibels. You can go deaf if you listen to this exhaust. I'm not being hyperbolic. I couldn't live with this exhaust. That snorkel, no noise at all. Nothing. Might as well not be there. But this exhaust, I would take it off and go back to a stock exhaust. I don't care if you lose 10 horsepower, who cares? But yeah, the patrol is for people who are not in a hurry to get places. Look at the road, look how much steering is turned over. But I like it. It's charmingly crap. And they don't make cars like this anymore, and they're never going to make cars like this anymore because cars today, apart from the Wrangler, FJ is dead for all intents and purposes. Nobody's ever going to make cars like this again. The Patrol is literally a car that can drive off the road and just go straight into the dunes. This suspension setup, uh, this King Shocks, whoever tuned it, top work on road. It rides really well. Given on this bumpy road, my truck would jump around a lot more. The brakes are a little bit not great to be honest with you. They're Patrol brakes, but they handle 35 inch tire. It's not fast, this Patrol. We're talking about 120, 140 absolute max, unless you're willing to flog the engine. I'm not. I think uh, it's it's very much a touring car. But I'm finally figuring out what this car is for and who it's for. And I'll tell you who it's for. It's for people who like to camp. Because you've got so much stuff you can carry. I don't like to camp. But if you do, this is a car for you. You can just carry everything. And it's very, very capable. It's so easy to drive off-road as you're about to see. It's for people who camp. It's not for people who dune bash. I don't think it has the outright poke to climb the very, very biggest dunes unless you put it into low range. I didn't have to, but it goes everywhere. The lift is so immense, it goes everywhere. But on road, it's for people who tour, who do distances, who take friends, who don't necessarily do harakat up and down dunes. That's who it's for. Will they pay 290,000 dirhams? And some of you are saying, why won't they buy a Raptor? They should buy a Raptor. Raptor is better. Raptor is newer. Just buy a Raptor. I don't think I'd buy this car for on-road work. But if you wanted the style, there's really only this one, you know. <laughs> it's only kind of one of a kind. Alright, let's pull over and do some dune work and see how this car is. So we're about to take 
the patrol out for its inaugural desert drive. Um, I've deflated it down to 12 psi in the front, 10 at the back. That's the way I like it. You might want slightly higher pressures, but that's how I find KO2s work best in the sand. Plus, these are C-rated KO2s, so they don't have quite the same uh, sidewall strength as the regular E-rated KO2s. So that's, I don't think they're going to rip or anything. I like how simple it is to go the four-wheel drive in this. That's it. Pull it back, four-wheel drive. Traction control on and off. That's it. Big ruts in front of us. How will the patrol do? Let's find out. Oh, what ruts? These are big ruts, but this car is crushing it. Absolutely crushing it. First gear, probably more torque than I need. Let's see how it does. These are very bumpy. People have been up and down here, but this car is just doing no trouble at all. Whoever judged the suspension has done a really good job off road. Third. Even in third, it goes quite well. Let's see, I'm pulling up this hill. Big hill, big hill, big hill. No trouble. So I think it's important to know that this is not like a big desert dune monster kind of car. It'll do everything. You just need to be sensible. Really, really sensible. I don't like being sensible. Oh, this is this is ambitious. This is ambitious. I'm always ambitious over here. But you know what? No problem. Four inches of lift are doing good things to this car. Good things. It feels really planted, really stable. I feel like I can just point up and go anywhere. This is bonkers. This is silly. Silly, silly. I had a wheel up, no problem. Very capable. This is surprising. 35 is not supposed to work. This car should be gutless and slow and rubbish and it's none of those things. Whoever did the off-roady bit, top work, top work. This is why the patrol feels alive, honestly on this kind of off-road stuff. It feels like it was made for this. Some classic cut-off noise on a patrol, which I actually haven't done cut-off yet. All right, let's... We also don't have hill descent or any of those gubbins. We don't have anything. That's why I like. It's so basic and raw. Even a Land Cruiser isn't this basic. It's just you and the machine. You do need to be awake. I mean, I'm a pretty good off-road driver. Don't do the stuff you just saw because you could roll a car, it's quite risky, but the car's very grippy, so big drop, big drop, big drop. I'll, I'll engage hill descent. Wait, there isn't any hill descent. Is there traction control? Is the sand mode? No. It's just me, the patrol, and thank you, terrifying drop. Drop, 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 <laughs> drop. Now, I did that in a silly way, and why did I do it in such a silly way? I wanted you to see if it would roll over, to be honest with you. Because this car, with this 4-inch lift, makes me think it should roll over. But it's not. It's just so stable. And in second gear, it just finds its way. Normally, that climb I do first gear in most cars, but in a second gear, ton of torque. Going round, going round the big bowl, going round the big bowl, and trying to avoid the uh, bottle of beverage. No problem. This review is done. <laughs> it's still a patrol. Actually, the modifications have made it good. So it makes me think, what would happen if we put this into, say, the regular Gazelle with the 33 inch tires? What would it be like? I think that would be better. It'd have more power. It's have plenty of ground here. These King shocks are incredible. I've driven a regular patrol. It's nowhere near this. It crashes on the bump stops. It just doesn't have the lift, the height. It feels like a 20-year-old car. Big drop, big drop, big drop. I have to go down. I have to go down. There's no other way. Considering how much weight we've added to this thing, at least, at least a couple of hundred kilos. Throwing the wheels and the tires. It's very good. It's damn good. Good work, engineering team. Now, 
you do have to flog it. That's the only thing. I like a modern engine, which has a ton of power up top. The reason this patrol engine is so good is because it's very much of the old school. You basically low down top, just pulling and pulling, and just I can just keep it in second. And look at this, walks up this stuff. Uh, Jeep, you'd have to rev, 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 rev. This thing in 2,000 RPM is just walking up. That's another reason, by the way, why I don't know if you need turbos. You're just adding lots of heat and unreliability and complexity to a car that just doesn't need it. It feels really solid. Rattling aside. <laughs> Alright, let's go to the other side though for my customary finish. But I think I've proved that the patrol can work off-road. I've proved it. The Gazelle is the real deal. Is it the best off-road car even? Drone, that would be the Raptor. And for this money, I would look at the Raptor honestly. But no other car comes with a manual gearbox. And you can still mod that's a big bump we just went over. Didn't even feel it. work maybe four maybe big lifts are the way to go this is also a very rutted road normally in my truck it just nothing nothing at all it's just fine it just gets it done for an aftermarket job this is the finest aftermarket suspension job I've seen out here the tuning is excellent I'm sure shops out there think I can do it better yeah I'm like yeah but can you do it with a warranty didn't think so and you're thinking, well, I don't need a warranty. Well, yeah, but here's how difficult it is to get this past a manufacturer. They have such high standards. So to claim a warranty, incredible work. So yeah, I'm starting to understand this class of people who camp, who need to be able to basically do everything. And I want to give a little comparison. Some people might be saying, what about the Land Cruiser Extreme? Well, the most extreme thing about a Land Cruiser is the badge. Because it's really nice, but it isn't a hardcore off-road car. This is. This can do anything. Any, 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 anything. Oh, let's go down. Let's go down. That's the drawers. I gotta get, get it now. I kinda get why these cars are so much fun. I just turned and went sideways up a dune while talking to you. The patrol is good. Is it 208,000 dirhams good? Only you can make that decision. For what it's worth, the engineering seems really solid. It's a lot of fun to drive, and uh, it's probably the most fun off-road car I've driven since the Raptor. Now, I wouldn't go this way. I'd get the cheaper Gazelle, 33-inch tires, same awesome suspension, and uh, yeah, probably a bit better fuel economy. I don't like the silly roof rack. I don't need any of that stuff. But the Patrol is a toolbox. You can do whatever you want with it. So you don't have to build this car. You can build whatever Patrol you want. So even if you don't want to get the Gazelles, you don't want the Falcons, you can just go and get the regular cheap cars. They're on 150, 160,000 dirhams. Uh, the Super Safari, 174,000 dirhams, now comes in manual. And you can do all of the same things to it. So I don't see what's there to complain about. It exists and it is good. It's also a little weird to look at. And on that uncertain bombshell, I shall leave you. Thanks for watching. This is Imtishan. I'm Motor Middle East. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe and all the rest. Till next time.